can say definitively that religions are all bullshit. Welcome to Brainstorm. We have the explicit tag for a reason. This is a base level argument to a higher level morality. I get paid to science? Two science as much as one can science. What the hell was my point? Trigger warning. The Brainstorm podcast will criticize your most cherished beliefs. We attack nonsense in all its forms and discuss difficult subjects. Hi and welcome to the Brainstorm Podcast, Skeptic Studio, where we do interviews, major topics, and news related to skepticism and atheism. I'm Corey and my panel tonight are Leo. Hello there. Renee. Hello. And Lisa. Hi. With the, with the always amazing Dave doing sound. The always om, om, omni, omniscient? No. Omnipotent? I can't say the word. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Omnipotent? <laughs> omnipotent. Are you omnipresent? Omnipresent. Are you, Lisa correct. Or are me. you... Omnipotent, which means you have lots of power, I'm both. or are you I'm both. I'm both. omniscient, meaning you know the future. <laughs> and by the way, it's interesting, but omnip- um, omnipotence and omniscience are actually like contradictory. So when people say God is both, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> anyway, I'll stop hijacking your show. Here we go. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's Lisa's job, God. <laughs> Gumby's not here to derail, that's right? True, Who else can true. do that but yeah, me? We, we need someone to do that. We're here in Roman Empire Studios in Regina, Saskatchewan, and today is October 13th, 2017. Our guest tonight is, is Jonathan Ariola from the podcast TDTF Pod. Thanks for joining yeah. us. Hi. Sorry, I didn't know if that was my cue or if I was supposed to wait for a minute. Like there was like a hand gesture that we had to do. do I don't know. <laughs> no, that's your cue. <laughs> oh, okay. Hi, everyone. People in the, that actually listen to podcasts, because mine's, it's a tiny little thing. I think I've got like 40 listeners. So if you're listening to this, hey, Jeff, what's up? <laughs> nice. That's great. We know our listeners by their first names, too, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Will so, and No, Lachlan. I just know the one. I just Will and Will and Lachlan. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So what now? Do I do a dance or am I supposed to remove clothing? I didn't know it was this kind of show. I guess I can if you want me to. <laughs> That's the after hours. Well, it part. is that kind of show, but. <laughs> yeah, we're, not, we're not the one with the last name Areola. What? <laughs> hey, hey. hey. Yeah, I was called Mr. McNips throughout high school. There was. Uh, I love that uh, so much. I think Nipperly McNippleton was good. <laughs> Um, there was McNipples, uh, da, 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 <laughs> large bandits. Um, and then there was a various different variations of that. Well, that's just so, stupid. You know. Nipples are different from areola. That's just dumb. Well, it's the pack of skin around it. <laughs> I know. So like, I mean, you're really splitting hairs and mine are okay. kind of hair. So it's okay. understandable. Wait, when you, nicknames are never, are never, are usually not that clever and they're usually not mm. very. I was know. just thinking like the kids at your school must have known quite a bit about the human Anatomy, body. I yeah. didn't know anything about Ariolos until yeah. I was an adult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> must have gone to one of those fancy class. schools. <laughs> it was biology class. We, we learned a lot today. Uh, and humility being one of them, which is good for the the soul, which doesn't exist. But you know, hey, it's it's good for you. It's I good think. for the spirit. What's a better yeah. way of putting that? <laughs> that sounds like bullshit. I'm sorry, I can't do it. I can't do it. Oh, no, oh, sorry. Oh, feels gross. Is there an evidence based study that shows mockery as child makes you a better person as an adult, more successful? Does it well, trend with li- anything? Does it? Do, are there any? I'm sure it would be uh, merely there? correlations. It wouldn't be. Well, we could, we could try to make to causality. Cause Why not? Yeah. I mean. <laughs> Are you suggesting I, like we get a bunch of small children and then make fun of them to see how they grow? Up? No, I think well, we should. That, well, that, that's what I was going to suggest. How about we get a, you know a, a bunch you, of kids you, and then like wait forty years and, and keep making fun? We of have them. to control them. Like we, we should clone you. Actually, we're going to clone you, and then we're going to give one of your clones your last name, and then one of, like a like a nor like a, I mean not a normal I mean uh, like a, you know a good one. And, no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll name one of them Smith, right. and then we'll we'll raise them in the same household and see what happens. 
Yeah, but he'd still be brown. So it'd be like, hello, Mr. Smith. Is it like Smith <laughs> egg? Am I supposed to pronounce it differently? Or whatever the situation is. <laughs> What's well, the well, racialized I, version of Smith? But that's why we're cloning you. <laughs> so we control for all that shit. <laughs> that's right. Okay. We'd have to have different. We'd have to have more than one. Let's clone, make more like for a statistically significant sample. Good point. <laughs> you don't mind any of this, do you? I do. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> Ready? We're gonna like recreate Star Wars, but better, and it's all science instead of like bullcrap politics. I love it. Mm. <laughs> Sounds good. So I guess as to an interview. Uh, <laughs> we're doing that okay yes, yeah, yes let, we're ready. let's do that <laughs> <laughs> you can't derail something that's never been on the rails <laughs> that's the true. First point. you gotta Shit. get on i don't get two derails from all this no, no. oh no. god damn it it has to have to be on track before you can take it off the track <laughs> so, so uh what is your background how did you come to atheism and skepticism Oh, Lord of the Rings. Um, basically, I was raised in a Catholic-ish background. Um, my mom kind of kind of is an atheist, I think, kind of, sort of, maybe, and has been for a long time. My dad, not so much. Um, we would go to church when someone died, someone got married, or Easter, or whenever grandma would ask, and then we'd go. Um, but growing up, I loved fantasy. I was a really early reader, even though I'm dyslexic, and it took me forever to figure it out. Uh, then video games and media like the Lord of the Rings made me think that other realities are possible and if other realities are possible. They also exist within a certain realm of rules because Lord of the Rings have rules and different languages and stuff like that. And so when I got to the end of the books, it was kind of this soul crushing moment of like, wait a second, these people are gone. They cease to exist. Wait, is that what death is? Oh my God. <laughs> and I fell apart. And then after that, I had this weird mysticism thing I was doing for a little while. I probably was like 10. And then after that, it was just like, no, there's no, it's none of it. Doesn't, it's not a thing. It's not a thing. So um, when I asked yeah. you the question and you said, oh, Lord of the Rings, you meant that literally. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Lord of the Rings deconverted me to whatever the fuck we were before. But there you go. The Christians had it right. <laughs> so uh, what brought you to uh, the podcasting? Um, somebody with a life debilitating disease. Life debilitating? Wow, English good. Uh, life debilitating disease. Um, I was working at a hotel. I had my second born kid. Uh, the first time I had a child, I was laid off two months after we found out we were pregnant. And then we, uh, I found another good job. I was working there for about two years and we decided to get pregnant again. And so I had another kid and about three months later I got laid off. So I was in a really bad spot and was working night audit at a hotel. And there was, uh, another worker I was training and she had some weird bone disease that it made it so that she couldn't move very much, um, and all her bones and joints would hurt. And some days she looked like death warmed over. And other days she was all happy and perky. And we were talking about like life goals and, and what we wanted to do with ourselves because I felt lost and like a terrible father and a ter terrible provider. And she told me that, you know, sometimes you just got to use what spoons you have. And if this is something that you really want to do, then you should do it. And so I did. And I recorded my first episode and I did all the work to publish it and – I've been listening to podcasts for a long time, mainly uh, uh, Ask an Atheist is my first atheist podcast okay. that I started listening to like seven years ago. Um, and then after that, I, I started doing it more often. And then she she moved away and I didn't get to see her. But it's her fault that I'm in podcasting <laughs> now. And I decided to stick with it because um, I am depressed. I have severe depression. And so I was using it as a means, as like a journal to express my thoughts and feelings, no matter how terrible or dark or lost they were, that I needed to get them out. And so I used it as my own kind of talk therapy before I decided that I really was depressed. And then I got into on um, SSRIs at Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors, for those that don't know, Zoloft, Paxil, that kind of thing, right. uh, as of two months ago. And so now I've been on it for about two months and the medicine's doing its thing and I feel less like the world is filled with darkness. So <laughs> that's uh, good. Does it take away your go. motivation to podcast? Uh, what, the medication? Yeah. No. 
Because apparently I like doing this for some goddamn reason. I haven't figured that fucking shit out yet. That's good. Did did it ever seem uh, – did you ever feel vulnerable presenting some of the things that you have on your show uh, to the world? Every goddamn second. Um, because I tell people about my internet addiction problem and – uh, the kind of thoughts that I have and I run away, my maladaptive coping mechanisms, the, the kind of things that are inside of me that I hate about myself. And it's not this like pity party. Oh, look at me. I feel terrible. Oh, <laughs> please give me some love. It's not that it is like, Hey, I am, I am working through my own shit and, you get to ride along with my process and trying to find out who the fuck I am, why I'm doing anything, if there's anything worth doing, and if so, why? Because I've I've spent a lot of time examining myself as a human being ever since I was little. I've always had this look about me, and that had to do with um, the sexual abuse that I received as a as a small child uh, at the hands of an extended family member. Um, so. I had this 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 look on me as a small kid. I might have been like maybe six and I'm standing there looking at the camera and I had that old man look of like, why are you taking a picture of me? Because at that moment when that happens to you, at least it did for me, is that I no longer looked at the way that people did things or acted or said stuff at its face value, that there was a motive behind it. And so it meant that I had to do a threat assessment on whoever the fuck I met. Right. And so what that translates into is my entire life examining people for why are they doing something? How are they doing something? How do they come to their conclusions? And why am I the conclusions that I have? And so I lay that all out on the show and I'm naked. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hence, too deep, too fast. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's my thing. Also, alcohol helps. <laughs> yeah. Small doses. Small doses, folks. Small doses. <clears throat> I was going to say it sounds like a diary without the melodrama. Yeah. yeah. You know. <laughs> Christ, Kristen, you just totally stole my top and I am mad at you. <laughs> Fuck. Sorry, was that too much? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Just a little. So it sounds like you're – what? Oh, God. Never mind. I, I was going to have a question, but now my kid needs something. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> parenthood. Oh, let's go. Yes, parenthood is good. Yeah. I am, I am a fan. I am a fan. Um, in, in the show right now recently, I um, – y- the show, I the way they're recorded is I usually do it on my daily commute. And so I'll hop into the car in the morning and it'll be something that's bothering me, some dream I had or something that's been bothering me the previous night. And so I'll do a recording and I'll drive to work. And it's only maybe like six minutes or so. So I decided that if I was going to do this, I had to do it the way that my depression would allow me. And so that's why I decided to do brevity episodes because they're only like six minutes or so. And sometimes if I arrive early, I'll sit there in the parking lot or in front of my house and do a couple extra minutes of recording. So it might be like 12 or 21 or something like that. But most of the time, these things are really short because I want it to be that kind of diary feel. Um, But really, it's just that if I were to try to make my depressed self edit i think i would die so <laughs> that that's kind of why it's the format that it is and that that kind of diary thing without the flavor is like this is just a dude who woke up this is a guy who's tired after a day of work and had a fight with the boss or accomplished something at work and some of the people that have talked to me about it think that it's like this vicariousness this vicarious method of experiencing an open emotional person without having to be openly emotional themselves because they have to keep it in all the time. And a lot of people, I think, have to keep it in all the time because if they were to tell their spouse that they're actually gay or that they're transgender or that they want to kill themselves or they think that nothing they do matters and that they regret being parents, um, usually it doesn't go very well. Right. And so if you have an avenue to express that in a place where – it's not going to come back to haunt you, really, because nobody in my fucking town listens to podcasts except for me. Believe me, I've asked. <laughs> and um, 
And since I live such in a small rural area, there's not a lot of atheists around. Maybe kind of sort of my mom and my best friend since I was a little kid. And that's that is it. So that's what that I was going to ask you. Like, do you do you, you you're so honest about this this stuff and you, you there's a family history involved and et cetera, et cetera. So do, does do do your loved ones listen to this podcast and how is that for them? But if they don't, then I guess it's, it's not an issue. Yeah. Do they listen? They don't. No. I've even told family members that I do a podcast. I've said that this is the name of the podcast. And they're like, oh, I want to listen. And I tell them, no, you probably don't. <laughs> but um, <laughs> if you feel like you need to, then there it is. Here's the information I'm giving to you. It's not that I'm going to say like, oh, yeah, sure. Listen to my podcast. It's the best. I think the whole world is filled with darkness and death. And I think I mean nothing. <laughs> yeah, you know. Because that's not quite what um, a lot of my Catholic family background want to want to hear, mm. so I don't I don't talk about it to them. Because why would I? They're fragile little snowflakes who think that Jesus loved them so much. And if I were to call that into question, as I have in the past, then they would start crying again because I did it in the past. And I don't want to do that <laughs> again. <laughs> you don't want to make your family cry again. No, I don't. That's okay. not my goal. Like forget about like atheists. Like, what about like you know you're depressed? Like do, don't like I mean, I w- if I knew that like let's say it was my son, I knew that he was depressed. I would want to like and there's like oh there's this window into your soul that you right. broadcast on the internet. I would totally listen. <laughs> like <laughs> unless he was like yeah. I really don't want you to. But like if he said he was cool with him, I would like I don't know. I want to do whatever I could to help. I guess. Yeah, which is fine. But it's because it's your child. You love your child. You'd be willing to do crazy, horrible, homicidal things for your child. Yes, I'm just I some would. guy. <laughs> the- <laughs> no, no, no. But I'm saying your loved ones. Why don't they want to? Don't they want to feel your pain? That's my question. <sighs> well, I'm sorry. I'm okay. going to make you depressed. Just talk. No, no, no. You, you don't topic. make people depressed. No, I'm going to. Like I'm going to lower your mood due to the. I don't know. How to sorry. Yeah. It, it's okay. It's okay. I understand. I understand. Sometimes people in, in depression are fragile. And had I not been on my medicine, had I not been talking to a therapist, had I not had the podcast, I probably would have been fragile. But at the moment, I'm, I'm not. And think of it this way, that again, if my, if my immediate family wants to know these things about it, that's all fine and dandy. But imagine, go back into your Facebook feed before you jumped into your own atheist podcast. And so you had your atheist version of Facebook. When it's just your immediate family, when Facebook was first around, and then Trump happened, and (laughs) all of your aunts and uncles started spouting this stupid, racist, anti-ethnocentric bullshit, and you're just like, oh, Nana, stop. Oh, God, just (laughs) off. And so you stop listening. I noticed that in my Mm -hmm. own Facebook feed, people stopped responding to the things I was posting because they could still be my friend but unfollow me. So they couldn't see something that I'd posted if it was a link to anything. If I wrote, if I just wrote words without any links, without any pictures, without anything like that, more people would respond. But that's because they put in a filter to block out all of my political bullshit in their eyes. And so to say that your loved ones want to hear your every thought, dark feeling and whim, I don't think that's true. Hmm. Especially with my family background is that, again, Catholic, therefore lots of babies and not my, my parents necessarily. There's only three of us, our siblings, but still there's, there's a lot of us out there. I think like the last count was like 376 cousins, first cousins. Wow. <laughs> there's a lot of, there's a lot of, it's okay. So I got to pick and choose which one I like, but that's what Fuck, happened. I have six. I have around 80, Catholic. so that's, you that's know. still pretty yeah. big. That's I, a I, good I Catholic family. That's a good Catholic <laughs> family. <laughs> I come from a Catholic background too, but we were bad Catholics. We used birth control. <laughs> worst Catholics. Uh, yeah, the worst. Nice, nice. You know what's funny? Um, they say ribbed condoms, but they don't taste like ribs at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't ask why I know that, but you're welcome. No, no we'll just assume. Thank you. <laughs> oh, so I, helpful. Well, I have a new idea for a condom. How about barbecue ribbed? <laughs> Dude, I love it. Mm. Let's do barbecue it. flavor. Chipotle ribbed. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, spice on your dick. No, <laughs> it's only on the outside, I was, I was buddy. about to say. <laughs> on the outside, you want capsin in your vat? No. Well, 
Sorry, people <laughs> usually use flavored condoms for any whatever. I'm you continue this. <laughs> I'm not going to explain any more of this shit. Continue, please, God. <laughs> No, it's your it's your floor. Have at it. <laughs> no, no, your interview. Your interview. Yeah. Well, it's very thank you. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just imagining like, you know what it's like when you have that really awful after burrito regret? Just <laughs> <laughs> For me it's after okay. post post po- uh pizza pop. Post pizza pop regret. Is, is that right? Is it cute? What? You don't have oh, pizza what? pops. Oh, right. It's a Canadian thing. It's like a microwavable uh, um, sack of yeah. cheese and pizza sauce in a – and it was gross. Oh, it's like a Hot Pocket. I have Hot Pockets. Yes, we have those. Yeah, yeah. it's like that, but pizza, pizza pop. Oh, Google it. That's new. I was thinking of like a popsicle of some kind <laughs> and just like a wooden slab of pizza inside pizza of some sort flavored of- pops. No, it's more like a hot pocket. As far no as deal. I know, I've never actually had a hot pocket because I'm not American. But oh, I've seen oh. Jim Jim Gaffigan. He's so funny. <laughs> oh, oh my God. I just about die every time I see that. Anyways, continue. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what the point was. I, I got lost at uh, condoms. So yeah. where are we at? <laughs> Does not that sure count as a derailment? That counts as a derailment. Yes. <laughs> not oh. sure where we're at. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were talking about burning sphincters or something. <laughs> yeah. So, and, uh, uh, that is pretty standard for this show. Yeah. No, we were talking burning about families, orifices. big families and no using birth control in your crazy big family. Yeah? Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. We were talking about why – I just hit the microphone. I apologize. That's, I'm, I'm drinking Irish whiskey with uh, margarita mix inside of a dirty small bedroom because I want to get all the different ethnic backgrounds, you know, just all mash them together. You're Irish, you're Hispanic, and then you're white trash. Just kind of, you know, put it all together. It's, that's, that's my point. Well done. Anyway, <laughs> you're welcome. Covering all your bases. <laughs> yeah, we're good. Yeah. So um, what I meant by, I don't want my family to listen to this stuff because the truth is, is that even if my family were to listen, they're really only going to be a very small number of any audience because, you know, even my 370 something on people that are in my family, sure. But when you're doing that whole Facebook thing and you see that, oh, they don't want to pay attention to your shit. Well, even if you put a well-reasoned, well-thought-out argument about why it was good, why it was bad, why it's horrible, they essentially ignored your very thoughts, your existence. And so really only about, I think, seven or eight people in my family were actually paying attention to my thoughts and feelings, responding in any way. And not, just a like, even a like, like right. it was just a few. And so I knew at that moment that my family really doesn't want to hear what I have to think. And so I, I got rid of my family Facebook account. I, I turned it off, you know, Whatever that's called when you try to shut down your account on Facebook because apparently they want you to resurrect it in case you die or something. But um, I decided that it was a time to walk away from that because they really didn't care, even though they're blood, even though they're family, that they didn't care. And the only people that seemed to be very interested in my thoughts were that select few who I called anyway. Then why don't I just talk to them when it's at that situation? But how many friends do you have? That when they call you, it's always something bad. It's always, I feel like I'm worthless. It always is, I feel like I want to die. It's always, I have a terrible relationship or I have no idea what I'm doing. Every single phone call. Uh, fuck, How I many think times- I am that friend, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the question. How many people pick up? How many people want to listen to it? My friends do pick up because they're really, really, really great people. But I try not to do it too often, right? Like you try to spread around <laughs> the sadness. Too. You got like a rotation. Thursday is Chris. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I'm. Yeah. No, for real. Spread the misery. My parents just are right. willing a little bit, listen a bit more than the friends. They have to. They have to love me no matter what. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> Well, when you have so many cousins, you can pick and choose because fuck the rest. I mean, shit. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the oh, point. You don't is that- fuck your cousins? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Where are you from I again? Am- Where are you broadcasting from? <laughs> I'm from Utah. I do. Appalachian. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're our own breed. We have the whole polygamous thing here with the small children. Yeah, that's that's Utah. <clears throat> yeah, good times. Good times. Okay. Uh, There's Catholics anyway, in Utah? There are. Yes. Yes. Huh. 
I would give you more details as to the specifics of my lovely little town, but it gives you specifics of my lovely little town, and I prefer the world not to know where I live. Okay. So <laughs> okay. Keep, sorry. Keep things know. wonderfully I'm not vague. Not trying to probe. I'm just, yeah. Fair enough. Wow. You're welcome. Catholics Somewhere in, in north, south, east, western Utah. You're welcome. Okay. Mm. Whiskey is good. It's good. It's good. Anyway, I forgot my point. So um, ADHD is a thing. I have it. It's fun. Um, how about you? <laughs> Depends on the day. <laughs> I'm still not over an atheist guy from a Catholic family in Utah drinking whiskey. Like I just, I'm really enjoying this picture. Sorry, I'm still on that. With margarita mix. That, no. That's what I can't get There's over. There's margarita mix in there? Oh, I missed yeah. that part. Oh, good for you. Yeah, thank you. See, I like the saltiness. I think it mixes really well. Yeah. Oh, God. Mm. That sounds mm. almost as bad as a gelato. <laughs> <laughs> the, the saltiness is what makes it good. <laughs> exactly. It's like salty nuts. I love them in my mouth. I chew on them. I have a big bowl at work. I even label John's nuts on them, and people come up. It's like, hey, John, I need some of your nuts. And I'm like, have at them. Yeah, <laughs> you do. <laughs> and they do anyway. It's great. I get to say the same joke at least 16 times a day. I bet. And you only get to, yeah. you only have to see the HR person once a week. <laughs> you can be we like have I, an HR person. <laughs> wow, uh, I'm, just, I'm just making shit awesome. up now. I'm just making <laughs> shit up now. Oh yeah, well yeah. If you're in the right again. industry, it doesn't matter. <laughs> true, I mean, the HR person is already gonna be pissed off at you for your last name, like right from the you know your last name <laughs> might offend people right there. You know what I mean? Like without even, anyways. Well, Good. If nipples freak you out, then we're not friends. So. <laughs> also, you weren't because I've got extras. Shop. Yes, extra, extra what? Extra nipples? Are we like a third? <laughs> Is that what's going on? I have one, two, three. No. <laughs> the, okay. okay yeah, no. <laughs> Corey, I just learned way too much about you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's kind of the point of the podcast, see, yeah. is that you learn too much about me. So oh, yeah. when I disappoint you, you're like, ah, I know why. <laughs> i'm only serious all right so um anyway uh what what do you what more do you want to know i mean like there's i have my show been doing it for a year um i got scoliosis if that's pertinent information my spine's crooked uh i got like seven different nationalities running through my bloodline that's a thing um i don't know I don't i'm know. at a loss you're at a loss i'm well, at a loss that, that's fine <laughs> Scoliosis sounds terrible. How do you cope with that? Uh, uh, heroin. Heroin's good. Um, uh, no, no, I don't actually use. Heroin. Not actually. No, not actually. That was inappropriate. I I apologize for that one. Um, no, I just. Um, it's not inappropriate do, on this I, podcast. I anyways. do chiropractic. I go to a chiropractor. It's my guilty thing. I feel bad about being a skeptic and an atheist. Is I go to a chiropractor because. From my very limited bad background in science, and even though I try, is that the only, the only thing that a chiropractor has any sort of scientific verified use for is lower back pain. Yeah. And it's just the lumbar. That's it. That's it. Everything else, total bullshit. But if just that twist and then the like the electrodes they put on you and then the little roller, which is basically massage. But it's it's helped me a couple different times, but that's kind of how I cope. And yes, I'm giving uh, a shyster money. I understand that. But every time he offers to do the laser treatment, I tell him to go eat shit. So, you know, it's good. <laughs> so you make do. Yeah, I totally did that, dude. I went to the chiropractor and then I told these guys and they were like, oh, and I was like, but it helped me. I don't care if it's in my head. It, my back is Hey, I'm, I'm in the same boat. I, I, I uh, popped a lower joint out of my back years ago. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the chiropractor helped me get from absolute terrible pain to functioning so yeah so suck again, it Corey. we'll go uh, to yeah. chiropractors if you want <laughs> I, I i also don't buy back. all their bullshit but yeah. no no yeah you don't buy all their bullshit oh oh my favorite was that uh i remember one time i went to this chiropractor it was it was a different guy i don't go to him anymore but he put these like little electrodes on my arms and my forehead and my chest and i thought i was like am i getting an eeg like what is happening <laughs> <laughs> and so I could see on this paper that was rolling by, I had this like squiggly lines. I'm like, lie detector test? <laughs> a and, polygraph uh, on a chi chiropractor? What? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. He wasn't asking me questions. He just left the room. I was in there for an hour just sitting there. And after he's done, he just kind of like vaguely looks through the roll and he's like, 
hmm, it looks like you're iron deficient, mm, and you need <laughs> more vitamin K. I have these supplements if you'd like them. They're only about one hundred and fucking sixty dollars, but you know, if you don't care about your health, I guess it's just fine. And um, yeah, so we didn't get those vitamins. <laughs> Great. It was great. He's such a piece I suppose with it. living in a small town, it'd be tough to be like just to tell him off like and never go to that particular chiropractor again. He's probably the only one. No, there's two. There's oh. two. Uh, and the one I went to who did that is related to me. So, <laughs> yeah. Nice. Small town. It's a thing. I had to uh, – speaking of small towns, I uh, – in high school – um, when I realized that females had all the bits I was interested in, use your imagination, and like areolas, to, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Exactly, exactly. But I'd have to get their last names and come back to my mom and be like, "Oh, there's this girl. She's just so nice, and I just she's awesome. What's her last name? I I want to tell you. What's her last name? <laughs> and I'm cousin. like, I'm like. Takiti, she's like, mm, sorry. I'm like, fuck. And that happened to me like one, two, two, four times. <laughs> four times. There was even one that I kissed that beforehand. I got. I'm like, hey, so how are we related to the housekeepers? We're not related to them, right? Yeah, you are. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> and so that deep sense of regret comes from somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, <laughs> incest aside, so small town living, it's it's weird being the only atheist in town as far as I can tell because no one's being out about it, is that the, we don't have a secular alliance. We don't have a Sunday assembly. Um, atheist of Utah is over the mountain, so right. I did go to one of those things. Um, Oasis Network, which I think is awesome myself, not not the crazy Christian one, the, the, the spacious, spacious um, one. Uh, they're also up north and and not here, so it's pretty much just myself hanging out, talking to people like this. Right. So, it's uh, how do you uh, do? You spend a lot of time talking to other atheists online, or do you reach out in a lot of various ways, or how do you find yes. a sense of community? Yes and no. Um, have you ever heard of Dunbar's number? Negatron. Negatron. Okay. Um, Dunbar is a uh, – he's a social scientist. And he went – he was doing this like culture study where where I don't know the specifics because, again, not an official scientist of any kind, shape, or form. Just a novice who likes this stuff. Uh, what he did is he found that social circles tended to be both historically, anthropologically small. That 150 or so relationships plus or minus depending oh, on the yeah. person. I've heard of this. pretty much the yeah. – and you've got different circles within it. There's like your inner circle, which is your really close, tight, intimate friends. So you might have like three or four or five, maybe at most. And then after that, you have another circle that's proportionally larger until you get to about 150. And then that's it. And that your brain really doesn't have room for more information. As soon as you incorporate a new relationship, someone falls out. Because one, the limit on time. Two, the number of, of cognitive space. And three, because of some other number that I forgot. But – all of those things make it very difficult to really get deep because, again, that's kind of my thing, into another relationship because I seriously don't have the time or mental capacity. So even though I'd love to have this large, expansive community on Facebook and all the internets and interwebs and stuff, I just don't have the human ability to do it. So I pick a few. I pick a few that I like. Um, I like Luis. Awesome. Um I like uh, Dan, Dan Ellis. He's uh, uh, the head of the Utah chapter of Atheists. It's just awesome gent. Um, And a few other people. One of them died, which sucks really bad. Um, It was Christopher Maley. He was a a gentleman and a scholar and fucking hilarious. But he died. And uh, yeah, you know, it's it's one of those things that that I decide that I need to find people I actually want to give a shit about because – I'm only going to be here on this planet for another maybe 40, 50 years. And trying to spread myself thin just doesn't sound like a good idea. And so I just don't. It's like the opposite of my philosophy almost. (laughs) (laughs) Thin is exactly how far I spread myself. 
You do right. spread yourself. That's true. <laughs> yes. True. Like not enough butter on too much bread. So, <laughs> I feel like I also heard about some like sociological experiments where they lately looked at networks of people who knows who. And yes, most people know about 150 people, but there are certain people who are kind of like nodes, like social nodes, and they know like 600 people and they, okay. they tend to be the drivers of social change. Like, you know, that person, you know, who knows everybody and like every, you know, and everyone loves them or whatever. And, you know, they, they just seem to kind of get her anyways. Like, yeah, I know a few of those, as a matter yeah. of fact. Uh, one of them within the atheist community, who is a friend of mine, Jeannie Ickard. Um, Ickard? I keep mispronouncing her last name. Anyway, she <laughs> does uh, uh, um, the Polyamory podcast and has also been involved with Reasonable Risk and, and doing stuff with Michael Schaefer. So she is one of them, as far as I'm concerned. She's one of those those people that, that are the, the super nodes. And there's this other lady that works for the county – who uh, I used to work with in the radio station that I worked with for the good times in classic country, 104.9 FM. I made it that number. So um, that's our local radio station. actually. <laughs> You're welcome. The wolf. But I was <laughs> the wolf. Yeah, it's nice. cla- it's classic rock, not classic country. But yeah, that's true. Yeah. No. Okay. Well, close enough. It's all the same. It's all, it's all, the, same. It's all the same shit. <laughs> it's all the same shit. There's music. There's words. Maybe some crying. It's like my sex life. It's good. <laughs> On my part, I cry. I'm a crier. I gotta admit, I'm like, I love you so much. Sorry, that was too much. Um, I need that. <laughs> Deep breath. <sighs> okay, more whiskey. More that whiskey. sounds like a joke that would have worked on the wolf. <laughs> yeah. You're that's, welcome. That's definitely a wolf joke. That's yeah, definitely a wolf joke. It's not that it didn't work. We're just all like, huh? Like we're just- <laughs> so you're a crier, hey? <laughs> how's that? I, how's yeah. that going for you? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, slightly. <laughs> Sorry. So, you know, you all I can think of is that really bad joke of someone that cries during masturbating. Tear <laughs> jerker. <laughs> oh, nice. You ever heard that uh, Bloodhound Gang song? Which Laugh one? dances are better when, when the, the stripper's is crying. crying. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that one. Jeez. You've never heard that song? Oh, I I have. Yep. Yeah, I Good. have never. What? I'm not cool. <laughs> hey, hey, you gotta fix that because it's a classic. It, it'll make you disturbed about human existence. It's good. It's good. It's a win. It's a win. Not a, not as good as the ballad of Chasey Lane, but <laughs> that's actually drawing a blank right now. I'm going to blame the whiskey. Fair enough. So, okay. Good. If all else fails, blame alcohol. The solution and cause of all of life's problems. Homer mm. Simpson. <laughs> I like this. I like this. We're friends now. We're friends now. <laughs> yeah. You're going to be number uh, 149. <laughs> now somebody else has to get dropped off. Yeah. Did I bump I someone? I don't want to bump someone. Well, that's murder. And if you tell people that you're murdering someone and then you actually do, we're all accomplices because we didn't report you. So I didn't hear that. Nope. Just in case you have to testify. You're welcome. <laughs> it's all fair. It's all good. And it's not like we're recording this. So yeah, there's going to yeah, be no evidence. Like we're recording <laughs> And <laughs> broadcasting it publicly. Yeah. None the wiser. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. No one listens. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Will, Will, <laughs> Lachlan, and they were Jeff, also accomplices. Was, was it Jeff, yeah. his Is it listener? Jeff? Uh, yeah. Yes, we, Jeff. Jeff. Jeff yes. He, was my, Jeff. he was my yes. first listener. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. You'll always remember your first. Always remember my first. <laughs> Only if they message you and let you know. Well, they did. Uh, well, there, but, you well there you go. Well, it, like, we don't know who our first listener was. One. And then I got an email. It's like, hey, I'm Jeff. My name is Jeff. And and then he told me about stuff. And I was like, that's awesome. I'm going to make a podcast about that. Then I did like a three-parter about the question he asked. So, nice. yeah. Yeah, it was fun. It was also a lot of fucking work. <laughs> Not good for a depressive person who's like, I hate my life. So, yeah. But <laughs> I, did it anyway. I did it in a way for you, man. I assume you're man. What? Just don't want to do like gender biased stuff, you know. True. No, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Just throwing it out there. Throwing it out there. So, so anyway, um, what you guys do for a living? It, it, see, here's a question. Here's a question. I say that because Americans have this like at least where I live in the Midwest Western side have the inability to have a conversation where they don't ask about your work. Yeah. And so I get 
it's like a habit that I have. It's like, so what do you do in these days work-wise? Because that's all I care about. It's kind of like in the South where they ask what your church is. And you're like, oh, I don't go to a church. Oh, you should go to ours. Oh, because yeah. I'm a capable of social interactions. Hi. You know. Who told us that? Didn't right. Will tell us that? That like people just go around and be like, what church are you? Yeah. I'm like, that's weird. What that's, they, do they, do they ask the Hindus here. which temples yeah. they're at? Like, no, we don't do. No, we have people ask what you do. We like, yeah. what you do. It's and usually Corey, what, what, do you, what do you do? But Gumby's not here to make fun of what you do right now. That's so true. you'll actually have to explain what you do. <laughs> I don't actually know. He said something about shoveling dirt and putting water in holes or something. Well, I, I don't generally shovel dirt, but I do run pumps that pump wastewater down into a well. And he only works part time. A deep well. <laughs> and apparently 84 hours in one week and then taking the next week off is part time. Yeah, it's only part time. Sounds lazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <lazy. Fuck. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just breathe in that H2S. It's fine. That's right. <sighs> yeah. For you. Good for you. Yeah. All the chemistry nerds out there are like, I understand. And everyone else is like, <laughs> oh, word. English. Great. Um, uh, I am a physicist. I zap people with radiation for a living. Who have cancer? We don't do it. Just oh. anyone. Only cancer people, Uh-oh. typically. Okay. Got you. Not nice. Oncology. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. Zap people. Okay. Well, use Apple Way. You use that whole science, gross thing to try to actually <laughs> solve problems. I like it. I like it. I prefer just to pray and like give hopes and dreams and thoughts and magics and rainbows and leprechaun farts to uh, solve my problems. But you use your science. Go ahead. Well, I mean, mostly it's actually me being scientifically trained and they hired me for that. And then they ask me questions like, what should we do here? And I give them advice and they're like, no, we're not doing that shit. That's too hard. And then, or whatever, we don't want to, or we'd never done it that way before. And then <laughs> so right? you get paid to have your advice guy. ignored. Yes. Okay. Oh, like but no, no, that's like maybe 40% of my job. Maybe 40% trying to schedule meetings between people who have completely conflicting schedules and 20%, I don't know, arguing with regulators, <laughs> <laughs> like writing, writing policies. <laughs> like, you, You're not know. supposed to dump the radium down the drain in the sink? No, <gasps> it's more like, I don't know if the, you know, the chain is of sufficiently, you know, high security quality to really chain this radiation source to the wall. Do we need to get a bigger chain? <laughs> I don't know. Let's look it up in 20 freaking pages of regulations. I don't Anyways, whatever. Oh, the answer of this question is obviously laser grid. Haven't you seen <laughs> movies? That would be awesome. I should have proposed that. <laughs> laser grid. Next time you get a question like that, you're like, okay, Smart. in order to do this, we Smart. need like we that. need sharks with machine guns strapped to their heads. Oh. I need some homing pigeons who are suicide bombers and believe that if they make you explode, they get to lay a bunch of eggs or something. I don't know, some sexual reference. And then you got to have your laser grid. I don't see why the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission would have a problem with that. that that's actually an awesome job idea. I will implement <laughs> that. <laughs> It's they a might have piece problem of America funding that, that, but yeah, yeah. Well, you know, whatever. Whatever. I don't Brad know how gives us money. Just yeah. <laughs> Make it rain. Make it rain. <laughs> Money's no object. I no, guess. no, not to our government. No. Well, unless of course it's like quarters, and you're like, "Make it hail! Make it hail!" <laughs> but then they kick you out of the strip club, and yeah. they don't like that. Our government no. gives us money to cure cancer, to treat cancer. That's why we were making jokes about government. Oh my! Oh. My boss Mine is just, the uh, government. Funds is, yeah, mine just funds his church now. So yeah. yay, the boss! Yay! <laughs> he gets yeah. cancer and has to go to one of your treatment centers. I'm just saying. I know it's a terrible thing to wish, but I don't feel bad about it. I don't feel bad about it. You wish she would have to go to one of our Canadian ones. Yes, I know, right? Wouldn't that be perfect to get someone like DeVos? But we give good cancer, care. Why would you want her to get good care? <laughs> well, because of the irony of it. I'm against health care and super hyper Christian and I get cancer and then have to go to Canada to get treatment in order to not to die. Perfect. You know, I'd we don't perfect. like force anyone to have treatment. Like they have to like sign consent forms and if I, they don't already, want treatment, already, we don't force them to do it. Like, he had <laughs> enough irony of having someone in he- <laughs> ahead of, you know, in, uh, in charge of education with no education. Yeah, I think you already have enough irony. You have enough irony in your in your government currently. (laughs) You haven't been to America lately, have you? No, uh, that's no. It's it's not that bad. Apparently, apparently, I didn't know this until the uh, recent election that uh, most of the country is are dumb and can't (laughs) think good. Hmm. So you know, it's one of those. I heard today that what did Trump say? He met with the president of the Virgin Islands. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. And the president of Utah. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, that I'm president. I'm bringing you back into that. Wait, was he talking about the air quotes president slash living prophet and the first channel to God slash the Jesus Christ church place thingy? I don't no, know. there's too many words there. That's probably <laughs> not what he was referring to. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Because <laughs> the Mormons, they think that their president of the church is also the prophet of God and the only conduit thereof. So, you know, whatever. So right, is he right. going to have to have to fight the Catholic Pope? Yeah, it's awesome. There's this video game. <laughs> you, you just got to, like, download it, and it takes over their bodies like some sort of animatronic, like, Friday Nights of Freddy's thing, and they just go box into it. It's awesome. Can we get a Man, rap I'll, battle made or something? I think that, that would be that, even be better. Great. That would be awesome. Yes. <laughs> I want that so hard right now. <laughs> but isn't isn't Trump going to respond to Eminem's rap battle? Like, isn't he going to he's going to do it? Right. He's too totally- many old white guys already have. This is what? not OK. <laughs> like, but I want Trump to I want Trump to respond in rap to Eminem. I want this. You know, Stefan Mullen, like you that. did a rap r- response to. Really? Yeah, it's. Oh, it's so amazing. Yes. I think it was in response to, to that. <laughs> You're going to make me watch that. I, I'm, I'm going to have I'm to watch not, that. Want, I'm not forcing you to do anything, but I, that I like would not subject ter- yourself to it if it was me. That sounds like such a terrible idea. I'm going to have to watch it. And apparently, like according to my Twitter feed, there has been a number of white folks deciding that they could rap like Eminem and yeah. respond. Yeah, no, no, that's not even close. Like, because <laughs> Eminem is awesome. Like, when you when you start thinking about the way that this guy just fucking shoots shit out there, like, and throws phrases together, that the amount of white connective tissue inside of his head is so immense to be able to put all those different disparate thoughts and emotions together in a cohesive sentence that even though using some side of type of uh, slang language can still accomplish the kind of things that he has and making the amount of money that he does based on a kind of signal that he's giving out there in a message that different people from different generations have grown up and looked at as something that they need to emulate in some manner or form. Yeah. I don't think that's going to be a thing. <laughs> yeah. It's just, yeah. I don't know. It's like taking people who are not experts at something and putting them up against an expert at something. And it it's almost just like doesn't that. make a lot of fucking sense. <laughs> like, like, this be is like, you say bold, yeah. I can beat you at running. I'm really fucking good at it. Like, no, you can't. Like, you just can't. Yeah. yeah. It's true. Yeah. I don't yeah, care if true. you won the Olympic gold. I can beat you. Yeah, that reminds me of uh, uh, South Park where Cartman tries to go to the Special Olympics because he thinks that he can win. Yeah, it's kind of like that. <laughs> I have not seen what? that one. Not South Park? Does he lose? You haven't seen that uh, one? Oh, I'm, yes, I'm thinking does. that is pretty much, that's pretty much Cartman anyone white that's place. trying to rap other than Eminem. That's <laughs> <laughs> Special <laughs> yeah. Olympics right well, maybe there. Maybe like another good rapper could go against him and maybe do, I don't know. But which rapper supports Trump that could go against him? No one. So who's going to do Kid that? Kid Rock? Kid Rock's yeah. rapper. Rapper. I think that's a misuse of the word rapper. Yeah, I'm not giving him rapper cred. Maybe no. Kanye. Kanye does support Trump, doesn't he? I think he does. Oh, he met him, right? He met with him yeah. at Trump Tower. and Oh, I want to see the Kanye versus Eminem Trump rap battle. Yes! That would be pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that is and what I want. just rap, except come back in vogue. Also, the easy. word in vogue. And you can bring... <laughs> He can bring all his compass kids, like the South by Southwest and Northeast, <laughs> whatever they're called. Oh, yeah. His ch- is, oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Is that a music festival? No, like, didn't they name their daughter, like, North or something? Yeah, Northwest. Uh, well, like, the last name West and uh, Northwest. Ah, yes, Northwest. Uh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Stupid as fucking Why? Day. Why would you do that? Because when you're a celebrity, you're, people like venerate you too much that nobody will really fucking tell you how stupid you're being, right? Yeah. Like it's that's it's just you need people who can tell you that's fucking stupid. It's the same reason that like Gwyneth Paltrow named her child Apple or whatever yeah. it is, like yeah, or blanket with Michael Jackson. Like, yes, yeah, uh, that was more of Good a nickname, blank. but. <laughs> Was no, it the nickname? It's, yeah, because it was because it was like Michael Jackson the third. Uh, and he mean. called him Blanket? Wow. <laughs> it's a, okay, okay, hold on, hold on. My name is Jonathan, but I have a nickname. You can call me if you want. It's Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> right. And it makes Hello. that much fucking sense. Yeah. Hi, my name is Desk. 
You can sit on me if you want. <laughs> I'd make a good stripper, I think. Mine is cold. <laughs> Skull I think this is bad lungs. Yeah. Your, your name's already yeah. chosen for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know how well that would work on a marquee, but, you know... <laughs> Welcome to the stage. Desk. No, I don't know if that'll work. No, no. His name would be like Sparkles Areola. What are you oh, talking yeah. about? Like, that, that's, what I, that's what I was saying. Oh, I guess. Yeah, that's, 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 better. that's a better or, idea. I was going to go or, with Harry, but yeah, Harry's good. I, well, we, I can, we, can, we can go with Harry Areola or something. That, that, yeah. And welcome to the stage, Harry Areola. Yeah. No, there's a, there's a fetish for everything, right? So that's cool. Well, I'm glad I'm a niche. That's nice. <laughs> right in there, you know, putting a clean slot. Mm. It section no <laughs> Urban Dictionary. Nothing. Never mind. Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I heard the I heard the Urban Dictionary reference. I went, oh, that's probably no. Don't put don't search don't any. Look it up. Don't know. I don't want to know anything that no. has to be defined on Urban Dictionary. I'm good. No, I'm good. No. <laughs> Also, by the way, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about in a kind of like confused but disappointed voice. Pretty much what my wife says all the time. (laughs) (laughs) You feel at home. home. It's it's, it's really pleasant. Yeah, because she's not an atheist. She's not. She's she's her own person. And we disagree on a lot of the religious stuff. Um, And so we tend not to talk about it. But I remember growing up that we had this uh, home ec class because – what you may not know is that I've been with the same woman for 15 years. I am 30. So we started dating when I was 15. We've been married for 10. Mm. So when I was 20 is when we got married because Utah. And um, we only have two kids and the oldest is five. So we are the statistical abnormality. Mm. But back in high school, there was a home ec teacher who was a cunt. And uh, I use that <laughs> lovingly. And she <laughs> – was teaching us stuff from Dr. Laura Schlesinger <laughs> um, in the class. Uh, by the way, Dr. Laura is a doctorate of physical education. Yeah, I knew that. So <laughs> anyway, um, she decided that um, because her and I were different religions that we would never – we would never last. And no, but once you find somebody you're not related to, you got to stick with that person as you have done. Like you've got to <laughs> – you have no fucking clue. Like, you're, like going through college, I'm like, hey, how are you? You know, me and me and the lady are kind of just kind of dating. We're not married or anything. How you doing? I'm doing good. What's your last name? Self edit because they don't want to say the actual last name. Oh shit, we're cousins. How are you? Like, what's up, cuz? How you been? That happened three times in college because I went to the college that's in my area. So that's what I'm yeah. saying. That's why you got to put your ta- that's why you put your talents into her, right? Like your wife, because like, you're just like not related. Yeah. Exactly. And so when she dies, I'll keep her in a glass case in my front room. It's refrigerated. And every year on her birthday, I'll take out a piece and eat it. It's exactly. You understand. You might have taken that a little farther. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can just have sex with your cousins once you're not like procreating anymore. Who cares? Just do it. Whatever. Uh, we won't judge you. Did you seriously just suggest <laughs> that I should induce incest? Well, I instead really, of I watch a lot of Game of Thrones, yeah. I don't really care. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not or, sure really where where it what don't you scale think is. Jamie and Cersei is like a beautiful love story, no? Uh, Nobody? I don't know. <laughs> I'm no, pretty sure really incest no. and cannibalism are on two separate scales. That's true. That's true. <laughs> the cannibalism thing was so worse, right? Yeah. It was worse. I don't know. It's don't two know. separate <laughs> scales. <laughs> I guess I didn't know. I'm saying that you should rape them. You have consensual sex with them. I'm not saying like (laughs) Jesus. Like, what's wrong with you? (laughs) (laughs) I'm trying. I'm trying to think. Have we hit all the taboos yet? (laughs) (laughs) And then the horse got fucked. The end. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. There. There's all the taboos. Okay. We've hit them all. You have listened to our podcast. You're welcome. I'm one of. I'm your fifth listener. You don't remember your fifth as much as your first. Though. <laughs> they gave you definitely. Yeah. If you like what we're doing and want to help us keep the lights on, go become a patron at patreon.com forward slash brainstorm podcast. You can hear the bonus half hour that we record every episode and get a shout out when you support the show. Become a patron for just a dollar an episode at patreon.com forward slash brainstorm podcast. Or you can support the show by ordering a t-shirt, mug or other gear from our store at 
kathypress.ca forward slash brainstorm podcast gear. If you can't afford to become a patron or buy gear, then why not give us a rating or write a review on iTunes or Stitcher? Every rating makes it easier for people to find us. Thanks for your support. We are given one life full of billions of small and large decisions to be somebody, to change, to be kind, to give hope, to become a better person and to leave a lasting impact on this planet. It is a decision to be made every single day while your heart is still beating. We've made our decision. Absence of clothing. Atheist and science-based apparel and merchandise. Donating 50% of our profits to charity. Look good and feel good without God. Check us out at absenceofclothing.com and find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest for discount codes and other sweet swag. Use the code BRAINSTORM at absenceofclothing.com and get 10% off. The Hardcore Skeptic Examines is a bi-monthly documentary-style podcast that includes interviews, research, and commentary from your host, Corey Johnston. That's me. As the host of the Brainstorm podcast, I've spent the last three-plus years trying to spread critical thinking and skepticism while having fun. This project is intended to look at some of those same topics covered by Brainstorm, but a bit deeper. With the long intervals between episodes and the long format, I'm hoping to provide good information that educates as well as entertains. Check out my Patreon for more details at www.patreon.com slash hardcore skeptic or follow my Twitter at hardcore skeptic. I'm Jenica. And I'm Patrick of Real Life Beyond Faith. And we are a formerly Christian, currently atheist couple, who take a deep dive into the experience of life after deconversion. Join us weekly as we talk about topics relating to the journey out of religion. And interview guests who have their own unique stories to tell. Look for us on Facebook, Twitter, iTunes, Stitcher, and anywhere else you can find your favorite podcasts. All right, I think it might be time to talk about my profession. <laughs> <laughs> a student's not a profession. <laughs> hey, I, I was just trying to do something to, to stop the horse fucking. <laughs> <laughs> just stop that's your, fucking the that's horse. Your new, that's your new bumper sticker. I was just trying, trying to do something to stop the horse fucking. All yeah. you have to say is, whoa. <laughs> This is fun. <laughs> oh. Welcome to anyway, Brainstorm. <laughs> Hi. Hi, everybody. What's your profession? Tell me. Oh, I, I, I don't really have a profession yet. I'm, I'm a student of political science and economics, but I do work. So, but I, I'm economics. I love economics. Um, what do you want to do with it? That's all. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Economisty things. <laughs> no, I, I kind of hate economics. The the, really? the the way it's taught, like it's all bullshit. Like the oh, it's it's all just assumptions be, built on assumptions on assumptions on assumptions. By the end, there is very little left. It's not evidence based. It's ideology ideologically it, based. Well, it, really, it, they they try so hard to be to be a, a science a, a, a science, mm. but they shouldn't. They should stop trying. But. It, it's still useful. I mean, you can but I like it. Freakonomics. I like that podcast. It's a awesome. great podcast. I love yeah, that same. podcast. But then, why not just do microeconomics that actually is evidence based rather than macro? Well, I I do a little of both, but um, my main thing is like my focus is political science, and then economics is on the side, kind of thing. Like, oh, okay. Less so, less of the focus. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. That, that's understandable. That's understandable. You know, I, I always thought with, when it came to economics that that out of the different social sciences, because I've studied a lot of them um, because I'm a terrible student. Uh, I was in psychology for a while because I thought it was awesome. And then I switched over to doing some sociology, but I realized I hated it. And then I went over to uh, business, which technically speaking, if you really think about it, is still a soft science. And you could consider it a social science because it's the interaction of individuals within a market. Anyway... So there's that. And then um, I never got into history. I like it, just never really studied it formally. And I was going to go into economics. And out of all the different soft social sciences that are out there, I'd have to say economics, micro, that is, is the only one that actually is not full of shit. With the exception of um, psychology, neuropsych- neuropsychology, because I love neuropsychology. But, yes, it's a confirmation bias, but mm, a little bit of economics, peachy king. But but the the microeconomics is built on the assumption that 
people are rational actors. Like that is that is the cornerstone of microeconomics. And as my very first microeconomics class, that was one of the first things the prof said. And I raised my hand. I was like, but that's not true. And she's like, but we're going to assume it is in this class. <laughs> and I shit you not. That is what she said. And at that point, I was like, all right, thank you for the clarification. And then I sat through the class. But I could just never get past that bullshit. Like that people are not rational actors and you can't just assume that everybody's going to to act in a way that is the absolute best way to act in every situation. As it, or in as, any situation. Well, <laughs> or as it pertains to economic decisions. Yeah, and So for sure not. So, so that, was, that was kind of what what turned me off the whole thing and I, as i've studied more of it like that is the going assumption in in all of it wow unless unless you're thinking of it that's the wrong assumption to be fighting against because okay being part of the spacious community that's the skeptic pacifier atheist anti-theist secular humanist satanist group um that i don't believe in free will so if Everything that I say, everything I think, everything I do is the natural result of a complex calculation of my genetics, my epigenetics, and my exogenetics, the experience of my memories and the formulations of the chains of the different things that I've experienced through memory in my amygdala, then I am doing exactly the most rational thing based on the laws of physics and chemistry and that every single human being is doing exactly that. The difference is that when one values currency in American dollars or whatever the fuck you have in Canada, uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> when you think of that as the measure of all of importance, you're making the wrong assumption. It's that you're looking at it from the sense of currency in a market rather than the reality, which is much more complex socially, because I might make less money by doing certain things. But if you look at the currency that I'm trying to acquire are like these little social tokens, these social circles, this network of people, I'm actually earning much more value because currency is unobtainable. Therefore, I am making the perfectly rational solution, even though I'm selling heroin. Well, I, I will, I'll grant you that. The, I, I, the first point of this kind of predetermined, everybody makes rational decisions on like the, the, the biological, in the biological sense, but the, the way that they promote it is that everybody will act as our textbook says everybody should act. And, and at that point, they it's not it's not that kind of predetermined action that everybody will do what they're meant to do. It's everybody will do exactly what we tell what we say is the best way to do things. So that's kind of where the disconnect happens. They're not actually doing the full like, calculation. Yes. So they right, they just right. assume that everybody's going to has perfect knowledge of economics and everybody's going to do it exactly the way that their textbook tells you to do things, which is not how things actually happen because their textbook right. is not derived from biology and the human. Exactly. Yeah. But then again, it's, it's that same question, which is the fundamental problem with all sciences, is that each different idea of science essentially is a small looking glass into which to view the natural world that exists. And so if you try to segment knowledge into its, each individual pool, there's always going to be a false sense of reality because they're only looking at certain kinds of things in a certain kind of way. Socially, their sociology – only is interested in the interactions of groups of more than one person where psychology is trying to understand the individual most of the time devoid of their interactions with the rest of the world. And so when you look at history, it's all past tense of the way things we used to do things while ignoring things like sociology, psychology, as well as economics, unless you're an economic historian, which is a thing um, – I took a class in it from an Iranian guy who didn't know anything about American culture. And so we get it made our own tests, which was fun. Um, <laughs> but still that each one of these different ideas are just small little narrow answers in how things work. That looking at physics as the main mode of interactions is all fine and dandy, but it ignores some of the other complex things that are involved inside of biology, inside of chemistry, even though there is such a thing as like quantum biologists – which apparently is a fucking thing. I didn't know that was until I listened to a podcast because that's where I get all my information. But <laughs> still, when you have 
the problem of knowledge being through these small looking glasses, you're going to have an incomplete picture no matter what. And so the question then becomes not whether or not this idea is right because all of them are wrong because they're not looking at the entirety of existence. They're not looking at the entirety of the natural world, which includes things like the movements of planets, which includes how the different um, clouds of electrons move inside of the different quantum mechanical levels inside of each individual cell and how the food that you're eating gets digested by the bacteria, which just so happens to make 80 some odd percent of all the neurological chemicals that your brain uses to think, which is greatly linked to things like depression, anxiety, and bipolar disorders, as well as things like schizophrenia because of the level of dopamine that running through your brain. All of those things are interconnected. They're not really separable. And so any field that you study is going to have those problems. And so the difference is that when you're studying your macroeconomics, yes, it is bullshit. But the premise that humans are irrational assumes that there's rationality that's under your control. Yeah, I, I do agree with that. I think the economics is a part of, of the, the larger picture. And I don't want to discredit it to anybody out there listening who <laughs> likes economics. I'm not, I, I'm, I don't want to discredit the whole field. But yeah, I have my issues with with certain parts of it. Okay, I have Why? a question. Oh, what? damn it! <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. No, I want to have a tangential question. Keep talking about your economics. No, it, it's it's fine. Oh, I'm done. I'm done. I'm good. Okay. I did nothing. I felt better. John. Yeah. You said. You're, okay, so you're part of this group. I've met a. I've, I've heard of a few atheists who make this argument, but but the lack of free will. And it's basically a deterministic argument. Like, okay, there's laws of physics. You push this thing with this angle and this initial momentum and something results, right? It's like, oh, we're all like a set of dominoes that are falling. Okay. So typically laws of physics are invoked for this argument. So as a physicist, here is my question. How does that make any sense given that we know, like, as far as we can tell, the laws of quantum mechanics, which at the most fundamental level is what, which regulates, for example, chemicals that move in your brain and make you make decisions, we know that those effects are statistical. Like, I, I know that statistically speaking, if I throw a million electrons at a, at a, at a, def, uh, a slit, I will get a diffraction pattern on the other side. But any one given electron, I don't know what it's going to do because it's, it's statistical. It's quantum mechanical. So I don't understand how you can say everything's a tyrannistic because what if there's a stray electron does some shit in your brain and you make a different decision? I actually have an answer for this. Okay, I've thought about this please, a lot too. Please, because I, I, nobody's addressed this for me. It drives me nuts. I don't understand. Static on a screen. Back in the day of analog, we had snow where it'd be black and white spots and freckles that you'd see inside of your television. Well, we thought it was random. Because at the moment, that's all we could see was random. But as we learned later on by developing better radio telescopes, that there is a background radiation from the Big Bang, that what it was is not necessarily true randomness. It's not true statistical randomness. It's simply that there is a layer within the world and the universe that we simply haven't been able to identify yet because we haven't zoomed in close enough or far out enough. That's all it is. So your answer is that quantum mechanics – that means this is an, an, you made an answer by analogy. Just, yeah. but, your, but if I were to say it directly, it would be that your answer is that quantum mechanics just – it resorts to statistics in order to solve a problem. But it, if we were to know more about how atoms work, it would be, it would be deterministic? It would be less random. No, no, and no, if it's no, no. Less random, random is not the same thing as stochastic, right? Can okay, I, okay. Just fair, to just to fair. interject here, I might, uh, I'm, maybe I'm misunderstanding the problem. Okay, but you have a million atoms fired at a slit, mm -hmm. and one random atom doesn't do what you expect it to do statistically. No, 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 no. We, we know. So statistics mean you have a lot of trials, right? You, you can't do statistics on one electron that you're firing, right. right? So any given one electron, I cannot tell you definitively it will go here. Like unlike like a billiard ball problem right. where I hit it with a certain angle at a certain momentum, it's definitely with certain friction, it's going to go. That's deterministic. It's classical mechanics just 
here to there, it's going to hit right there exactly. Totally right. know that. Electrons, you throw them at the slit, you actually don't know where it's going to hit this particular one. You do enough of them and you know what pattern they form on average statistics. But one given every, like on a quantum level, like one, when you, when you look at just one thing, which can have an effect on, for example, the decisions you're making in your brain, as an example, um, you don't know what it's going to do at a quantum level. That, okay. that, is, that is fundamental to quantum mechanics. And in fact, I mean, Einstein hated this, for example, but it does seem to be not just, um, as far as I know, and I've talked to physicists who study this kind of thing. I've talked to them about this. It's not just, uh, you know, it's because not, we just don't have enough resolution and we didn't know that the cosmic microwave background was there. Right? It's not that. It's that at a fundamental level, quantum mechanics tells us that that atoms at subatomic levels are statistical, are stochastic. We don't necessarily, it's not deterministic. You can't say input this and you get this for sure. It's input this there and there's is, a statistical probability that any number of these things could happen. Right, but there is still an input that caused mm. that effect, right? So it is still deterministic but, but, in a sense. Mm, well, it's there's input, but the effect is not is not known, not until you observe it. You can't. But, okay, but, 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 but so it's you probabilistic to, is what you're trying to say. That's what I'm saying. But okay, it, it's, it's probabilistic. But it's still cause and effect. Yeah, still all just cause and effect. Just because you don't know what the effect will be beforehand doesn't mean that that electron gets fired, hits somewhere, mm. and then whatever effect it has once it has hit that mm -hmm. that that backdrop wherever you're firing it at. Like it, but, it, it but, doesn't require you to know what the outcome will be, but there will be an outcome. There will be an outcome, but 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 the I, but the whole argument for free will says the outcome will be this, right? Like that, that there is like the universe is only unfolding in such a like like a like a straight series of dominoes. It's just going to unfold in such a way, and and it's just going to be that, and that's that. There's just no way around it. That's just what it's going to be. But I'm saying on a quantum mechanical level, when you get some cause, you don't necessarily know what that effect is going to be. It maybe have some effect, but I don't know what it's going to be. Yeah, I, well, that's I, whole point. I tend to think of it the other way, where yeah. you have an effect, and uh -huh. so you know that that effect had a cause, yes. and that that had a right. cause, and, and right. that's but that doesn't what mean everything that came, like that, that you could predict what's going to come come in the future. Well, no, that's, no, no, no you're absolutely now. right. There is no predictive yeah. necessarily 100 percent accuracy in that. But but the but, whole idea of, of not, there not being any free will is if we knew enough, if we understood enough about the universe, you could actually just predict it. Well, that's. Not the no, nobody, as far as I've heard, nobody pretends to claim that we know where the dominoes will land. I get it, no, no, it no, is but, some kind of domino arrangement. We have no idea what it is, but, but it's it's all going to be one domino is going to hit something, and it's all going to go somewhere. But they claim that that domino that's going to be hit a hundred years from now is inevitably going to happen. That's the whole idea. Well, it's and, inevitable. And if you look from that domino backwards, yeah, you can yeah. draw that line, yeah. right? But but because just because you don't know where the <laughs> electron's going, the electron is going there anyway. Like regardless of if no, you no, know no, it no, or that, not. no, no, that's what I'm saying. At a quantum level, literally, we don't like it. The universe doesn't know you. You, I could not. I could not take, okay, so here as an example, I could not take the spot from one single electron from my slit experiment and trace where it came back from because there's, oh. it, I can't. That's what quantum mechanics says. Yes. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with you, except for the focus of your lens. Okay. I don't want to get all woo here, but first let me just say, entire time you guys were talking, I'm smiling this huge grin because this has to be one of the more engaging conversations I've had in a very long time. I love it, <laughs> except for my five-year-old who was telling me about, I don't know, some weird dream he had. It was awesome too. Anyway, <laughs> but um, what I'm saying is that, and this is why I brought up the point that the problem with any sort of field of study is that it narrows your lens too much. When you're looking at a single electron, you're totally right. Yes, the quantum mechanical model shows that the math shows – that you can't really determine where each one is. But the human being is not a single electron. It's not just one. The reason why our quantum mechanical models are models in the first place and how they function is that it's statistical over the likelihood, the number of experiments, you can't just do it once. You have to do it hundreds of millions of times to really get the over idea of what the pattern is. But the human being is made out of a ridiculous number of atoms and even though, yes, there's going to be some odd quirks back and forth, but the overarching pattern, as with the quantum mechanical model, when you look at it, the larger picture of the human being, it's pretty deterministic okay, because so the pattern isn't 
exceptional from that it is a small idea within a within a single electron where it fires where it ends up how did it get there what's the what is that the one with um i'm thinking schopenhauer but that's the wrong name schrodinger uh, sh- no not sure Sch- was it schrodinger the guy who said that you can't tell a velocity and location heisenberg. of an electron within a clock heisenberg okay. he's a nazi heisenberg. <laughs> well yeah that happens sometimes he's like the only <laughs> one they had like all the other good scientists who were with the allies anyways continue uh, anyway, so so the point is is that if you're looking at a single electron, sure, but we aren't just single electrons. Okay. We are a culmination of all of these things. So two things. And so across the board, two. So two things. As a physicist, I would say yes, because there's a statistical probability. We have lots of atoms. I would say yes, you, you, you tend to get certain outcomes, and, and that's why human beings are actually crazily predict, you know, predictable, right? The way human beings will react to certain stimuli is actually scary. Predict- you know, you, you traumatize somebody, and people all tend to react the same way. It gets really bizarre. People react, yeah, true, on a macro level, like compared to uh, subatomic level. However, um, we, like our brains, for example, and, and lots of things in the universe are chaotic systems, which can be affected by one single subatomic particle. Yes, definitely. Which is very butterfly effect. Very butterfly it's effect. It's butterfly. Well, but that's but butterfly, butterfly effect is, is just like a, a layman's term for a chaotic system. And there's and there are lots of chaotic systems out there we, that are but they're not predictable. I, I don't I, – I, 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 I could be mistaken, but I'm failing to see how this is anything but still cause and effect. The fact that we can't trace it doesn't change that it's cause and effect and deterministic in a very uh, one thing leads to another type of way. So, okay, so trying to defend, be my own devil's advocate. From my understanding, what you're saying is that if you break it down to the most fundamental level, no matter what we would do, as far as our understanding of, of math, understanding of the existence in the universe, that fundamentally – there is a type of probability to everything and that there are sometimes going to be a moment where I put my hand against this wall and some of my cells are going to phase shift through that fucking wall and be embedded on the opposing side. But I can't tell because enough of my cells, enough of my nerves, enough of my skin cells didn't do that. And the only way I could tell is if I had some sort of like radioactive marker on my cells and I could tell where the radiation, the radiation was coming from on the opposing side. I'm sure there's some sort of – I keep hitting my mic. Damn, I'm drunk. Anyway, um, the, the cells on the opposing side could have phase shifted because the electrons were in the different positions so they never repelled each other. Yes, that's entirely possible. So that means that all of our things, everything, everything that you think, everything that you feel has a certain level of – air quotes, randomness, stochasticity, which is technically different. And I, I agree with you that I don't know enough to be able to give you the specifics as to the why, but I'm going to agree with you on default. And so that means is that there's always going to be some variable either through the butterfly effect because of this chaotic system that you don't know what the outcome is going to be exactly. But Sorry, it's not that I don't know. It's that it is not determined in the fundamental laws of the universe as to what that outcome is going to be. Yes, that's Totally. It's not yes. inevitable. So there's – therefore what happens in like, the sequence what, – what, the state of the universe at any given moment in time is, has not been predetermined because of a state in an earlier time because of these uh, – because of, cause of the, these chaotic slash stochastic effects, which seem to be at a fundamental level. It's interesting. So, because when a, I was an undergrad, because I, I was that's totally, different... I was totally a determinist in terms of yeah, free will. Like I remember in high school being like, oh yeah, there's no free will, it makes no sense, like everything, you know. And then as soon as I did my undergrad degree in physics, I was just like, oh, quantum mechanics is not just using statistics to get the right answer. No, no, no. Like which is what most most studies, mo- most fields of study use statistics for. It's like astronomy uses it for that, economics uses it for that, but. <laughs> uh, Quantum mechanics does not. It, it, it actually, they actually found that universe is actually just random or is probabilistic on that level. Well, so, so like I, actually, I have a question, a legitimate question. Uh, so, the, wait, basically, what you're saying? I'll is, decide that. No. Well, <laughs> well, so, what, I, what I'm getting from 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 your take on this, or from the uh, from the physics, the fundamentals of physics. I'm not saying everyone in physics no, no. would agree with me, but, but I just there, that's just my feeling. There still is no free will. It's just. It's either um, it's, random it's more, or it's, it's deterministic. It's, it's probabilistic, but still no free will. Like with what you're saying, right. even though you don't, it's it's just a more probabilistic determined thing. It's random. It's it's, it's, it's like a <laughs> well, I'm I'm using probabilistic because Lisa didn't want to use random, 
But well, I would, like random. I like that. But it doesn't <laughs> mean the same thing. No, but, but, but wouldn't wouldn't that be the case then? There's still no free will. It's just probabilistic outcome. But it's kind of a unknown, sort of predetermined probabilistic outcome. Or, okay, so here's a good example to extrapolate on that, or at least an analogy. Um, say cyborgs are a thing, all right? So you get into a car crash. I replace your whole left arm with that of a robotics prosthesis. Uh, at what point would I take off parts of you and replace it with a machine? At what point do you stop being human? This is like a classic Greek. There's a classic that's, Greek that's example. That's the grain you take of sand. The boat the, and, and you put how many grains again, of right? sand becomes a pile? Yeah. <laughs> how many grains of sand become a pile? Because realistically speaking, if we're trying to split those kind of hairs, when we're getting so down to the minutia, down to the quantum mechanical level, or using super string theory or whatever the fuck that is currently being kicked around in physics with dark matter and all that other lovely, awesome, wonderful, amazing math, that you're really trying to split hairs functionally functionally we don't it doesn't really matter if it's 100 percent accurate because fundamentally our experiences determine our behaviors our genetic code gives us the tool set by we operate the experiences that we have shift our genetics through epigenetics it turns on and off certain genetic markers and then our exogenetics which is the bacteria and the little mites that live on your face and all of those things that make up the majority of the dna that you are made out of that isn't yours that has the determining fact deterministic factor of your behavior of what you do of what you think that you have no control over. And so if you were to say that free will exists, then it would exist in that quantum mechanical model of that slight randomness that we don't understand. It's the player inside of the the um, holographic universe that's operating the character that is you, that's playing this, the little eh, left or right, good choice, bad choice. Do I think this or do I think it this way? The probability of the universe and everything that happens does have a kind of deterministic sense, but not 100%. At what point do you consider 99.9999999999? How many nines does it take before you might as well consider it 100%? Okay, so I think fundamentally we're disagreeing because as a physicist, something has to be 100% for it to be real. Like, for example, like I wouldn't say that, you know... 587 trillion 798 million billion 582 is basically infinity no that's not infinity no <laughs> infinity is not a number you can't basically. be an integer that's stupid no like it has to, you know so like it has no okay. 99.999 is not enough it has to be can, it, it has to be if i'm deciding whether i'm, I'm gonna murder someone okay <laughs> I, I, like like given my upbringing and given I, I, I totally agree with you given <laughs> given my current configuration of atoms it is very unlikely i'm going to decide to do that but it is true that quantum mechanically statistically an electron could move around in my brain in such a way unlikely as it is that that might cause me to think oh i think i should kill renee and i would kill him like it, okay. it, it's possible that that could happen <laughs> and because and as a target. physicist <laughs> That possibility existing is everything. I have like, that kind like, of effect on people. Like some, some mathematicians literally just spend their whole lives not finding an actual proof to a certain theorem, but just proving that a proof could exist or okay. that a solution does exist. Just, and, and this is the fundamental level that I'm talking about. Anyway. No, no, I, 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 I hear what you're saying and I actually I 100% so agree with you. I just want to know what do we mean when we say free will? Yeah, that's a good question. Because I feel I, like we should have defined this at the beginning. <laughs> this, this is true. This is true. With any sort of question, you have to define your terms. So I think that the thing is, is that sure, we could get through those specifics of what free will indicates. But essentially is whether or not your concept of you, your concept of yourself, your concept of decision making actually is a thing or not. Because it feels like it is. It feels like you are your mm, own personality, mm. your own identity. Mm. It feels like you are this thing. Mm. But are we really? Oh, you know, I agree with you that a lot of it is illusion, right? Like, and there's there's been neurocognitive studies that show that, you know, you actually come to a decision, like whatever, which political candidate to support based on emotions and yeah. based on instinct, and you come to it pretty quickly. And then your brain is very good at justifying why it is that yep. you chose that. Like, you know, no, it was totally rational later, but you actually don't. Like, absolutely. There's, there's so yeah. much. We, we, we kid ourselves so badly. Absolutely. I can. Yeah, totally there's lots that. of studies that show that your, your brain does a thing. And then you 
recognize it consciously. Yes. <laughs> and now and we're you, back. And justify it, rationalize it, right? <laughs> yeah. And now we're back to Deja economics. Vu. Everybody is, everybody's <laughs> rational. Yes, and everyone's <laughs> rational. No, rationalizing, on... which is not the no, same no, as no, being no. rational. No, I, I was it's the that, opposite, actually. That was, that was sarcasm. That was, oh, sar- okay. that was sarcasm. <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely. No, you're totally right about that. And, and you know, a large, lot of part, large part of it is your, you know, where was I born? What are my demographics? What were my, you know, what was my upbringing? Yeah, did I, what did I suffer a trauma as a child? Did I, you did I, it's a, you know, it just goes on and on and on. It also depends on what kind of bacteria that live inside of your guts. Absolutely, yeah, no, totally. What kind of food yeah. that you feed them. What, what's the likelihood of yeah. that particular thing producing enough serotonin in order for you not to be depressed? And so you have this idea that skepticism or any sort of sense of uh, cynicism is such an important thing. So you tend to doubt everything. And so when you run into any situation because you doubt yourself so much through anxiety that maybe this isn't exactly the how things work. And so you question it and you question it. And other people don't have that. And if they don't have that, what's the likelihood that they're going to question their own thoughts, their own feelings when they never have that kind of self-doubt based on some sort of neurochemical imbalance, based on what kind of food you ate as a small child because the one kind of bacterial culture just happens to make enough serotonin for you to do this? So I guess for me, so going back to the question of free will, to me, the question of free will goes, goes to – could I have done otherwise? I'm probably mostly not going to kill Renee, but could I have done otherwise given, <laughs> given a stray electron? And I feel like that's true. However, I would agree with you that like this whole concept of me th- like choosing right. to have done otherwise, like free will, like being a choice is sort of wishy-washy and is very difficult to yeah. pin down. So I can, maybe we've come to a kind of consensus. I think so. Anyways. <laughs> it feels like. It feels like it, but also you still disagree with me on a fundamental level, and I totally understand why. Well, you just like, don't agree that that point zero 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 one percent chance is important, and I do. But I it's everything. <laughs> it, it's, it's not. It's not everything. Fist. There's there's a lot of other numbers as well. It's it's a very important part of it. <laughs> okay, uh, I think number. that is a great spot to finish this off. <laughs> <laughs> why don't uh, you plug your stuff? Where can people find your podcast? Well, first of all, I love this show. I love that you guys put this together. I love that you're expanding out and doing um, Hardcore Skeptic. I love a little bit of physics in there, and I appreciate (laughs) the conversation. Thank you. Thanks you for having me. Um, My show is TDTF Pod. Uh, My name is Jonathan Ariola. I'm on SoundCloud. I'm also on Facebook if you want to talk to me there. You may or may not enter into my Dunbar's numbers, so I'm not going to engage with you a lot. But I'll at least say hi because there's only like 40 listeners anyway on my show anyway. On yours, there's a lot more. I, I know that for a fact. But on my show, there's only about 40 something. A lot is so, a relative term. <laughs> it's more than 40 and more than 99.9999999%. So, um, Sam Harris gets millions every, every podcast. Just saying. I don't. No, stop. Sam Harris is a dick. <laughs> I, love I totally so agree. Much. I, I love, love him. So no, no, no. Don't get me wrong. And no, Alex wrong. Jones has how many <laughs> listeners? If we're going to compare this kind of shit. <laughs> and Donald Trump has how many millions of yeah. followers? And, uh, okay. yeah. and Fox News is the high, like the highest watched cable news channel. <laughs> exactly. I the American some days. Oh, God. <laughs> I know quantity does not necessarily show quality, gentlemen. No, it doesn't. But... No, it doesn't. <laughs> Still, anyway, anyway, so so again, I like your show. I appreciate it. That's my show is TDTF Pod. I'm on SoundCloud. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. Everything is TDTF Pod. So awesome. that's pretty much it. That's my thing. Cool, man. Well, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. I got to talk physics. Fun. <laughs> yeah. So. I figured we'd get somewhere to having a good conversation at some point. <laughs> At some point, come on! And the donkey fucking wasn't the thing. Like that was. A, <laughs> Once we got past enough. the donkey fucking, it was a horse. <laughs> oh, it was a horse. oh yeah, <laughs> oh, a horse. A bigger yeah. animal. Oh, yeah. Confabulating things. I apologize. Sorry. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks again. Have yourself a good night. You too. <laughs> bye bye. Take care. All right. Um, we skipped right over like. Everything that Does I want to do. Does that mean I don't have to do the article? No, that doesn't mean that. You. <laughs> I'm only on page four of 19. <laughs> this is where we'll take the break for music, though. <laughs> for live listeners and patrons, you can enjoy the next few minutes and then we'll be back. For regular feed subscribers, this is where we'll end the Skeptic Studio. 
Remember to check out the Shift to Reason Radio next week to hear listener feedback, new patrons, and iTunes reviews. This week's music is Satellite by Rise Against, God's Love by Bad Religion, and Adam to Adam by Otep. All right, plug your stuff. Let's start with uh, Dave. What do you got? Dave's not here. Um, <laughs> no, I just wanted to say, um, I just thought it'd be cool to announce here. If you have any um, listeners in the Los Angeles area, um, I just found out today that uh, two films that I worked on are playing uh, at a festival there in November called Skin. What is it called? It's, it's a First Nations film festival. Um, uh, end of November. Um, so yeah, it's going to be at the, uh, the Chinese theater there, like the, the historical theater that okay. is, cool. that's right on the, um, just bring up things, LA Skins Fest. There you go. Uh, Native American arts organization, nice. uh, festival. Um, and yeah, it's at the, oh, I wish I could remember the name of the theater now. It's a really well-known theater. Like the Walk of Fame is right there. Uh, um, Grommans? No. Um, I got it here. TCL Chinese theaters, that's the one. So okay. it's if you see the picture, you'd probably recognize it. Like you yeah, said, I, I think I got it in my head, yeah. but I can't think of the proper name. So I, um, yeah, a couple of things I did are playing down there in Hollywood. Nice. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to go. So, so if you have any, if we have any listeners who are in LA and want to come hang out with me at the uh, festival there, um, nice. Please do hook up with me because I will, I'll be around, and I'd love to get together with a local and. And uh, see what the, the place is about. This is uh, the weekend of Friday, November seventeenth. That's the festival. So awesome! Yeah, that's awesome! Yay! So good for cool. you, Dave. Very cool and very good films. Like their First Nations uh, issues and stuff. So nice. They're, they're, I'm quite proud of those ones. Cool. Okay. Uh, I also have I have a new episode of the Hardcore Skeptic Examines is out. Uh, I did an interview with uh, Dr. Christy Winters on feminism and social justice. And we have started doing a GoFundMe for our next conference. So we, uh, Angela and the planning team, uh, have been working pretty hard on getting a venue and getting together a speakers list. And we're, we got a GoFundMe with a goal of $5,000, and that will cover everything we're hoping for the conference and anybody who donates the money that they donate will go towards the purchase of their ticket price. We will uh, keep track of all that and we will definitely apply the amount you donate to your purchase of a ticket. And we're committed to doing a positive skeptical conference uh, with a diversity of speakers, a few controversial topics and a harassment free environment. This is our main goal. Are you talking about free will? I don't know. It depends. Maybe. Totally. <laughs> so you can support the Shift to Reason conference at GoFundMe.com slash Shift to Reason conference 2018 with dashes in between each of the words. Let's hit that outro music. You can check out the show notes at TheBrainstormPodcast.com and our website, BrainstormBlog.net. Thanks to our financial supporters, Aaron, Daryl, Destin, Sucks, Alden. Uh, Lachlan, Lisa, Magnus, Michael, Nathan, Positively Skeptical, which is Gumby, uh, Rob, Stephanie, and Will. If you want to join their ranks and, and help the show grow, then you can do that at patreon.com slash brainstorm podcast. You can join us live every second week when we broadcast live on Spreaker. You can find us at spreaker.com slash user slash brainstorm podcast. Our next guest is not listed here, <laughs> but... I'll post it on our Facebook page. Thanks to Jonathan for joining us. You can find out more about his podcast at soundcloud.com slash tdtfpod. I will put a link in the show notes at thebrainstormpodcast.com and the notes on brainstormblog.net are still in progress. I'm slightly less behind than I was before. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Thanks to Dave for our intro music. Thanks to Alex Kepper Murdoch for doing the voiceover for the intro and some of our ads. And thanks to Jason Camo for our outro music. You can find his stuff over at alawstateofmind.com. All music played is either with permission or under the SoCan license to play. Thanks for listening. And remember, the truth matters.
This is an opinion-based podcast. Each person on the podcast is responsible for their own opinions, and those opinions don't necessarily reflect the views of the rest of the panel. Any guests or anyone associated with the people on the podcast, such as spouses, partners, children, other family members, friends, or employers. No one person speaks for the podcast, with the possible exception of Corey, and he doesn't speak for anyone else on the show. The Brainstorm podcast does not represent the views of our sponsors. We just wanted to say thanks to everyone who listens to us, shares the show, gives us a rating on iTunes or Stitcher, or supports us through Patreon and Gumroad. We don't have a lot of interactions with our listeners, but what we have had proves that we attract some of the best people around. Smart, kind, and cool. An audience truly worthy of the titles Hardcore and Woo Free. Thanks for helping us make the world a smarter place. 